everyone. I'm Robin Zimmerman. With me today is Luke Gronsky. He's a certified financial planner with the Barnum Group. Barnum Financial Group. Barnum Financial Group, yes. <laughs> Good to have you with us. Well, as long as you all keep inviting me, I'll keep showing up. <laughs> okay. I really love what we're talking about today, myths. Myths yes. in, in financial planning and having a strategy. And so we're, there are five. I hope we get through all of them. And the first one, Luke, is everyone fits into a category. Yes. Um, I guess what I'd say about this is that labeling people in financial planning works about as well as labeling people in other walks of life. <laughs> right. Like it doesn't usually lead to anything <laughs> right. positive. So it, you know, it's good to have goals and set priorities, but to label someone, um, and let me give you an example. If I sit down with three different couples who are college planning and, and their goal is to send their kid to college mm -hmm. and I say, okay, and I put them into a 529 plan because they want to save for college. Well, that's not going to work just because I labeled them as, you know, college planning parents. Like, Right. One student might want to go to USC, one might want to go to Ivy League, one might right. want to stay at a community school and stay home. Okay, right, all right. And that there's, you know, conser okay, that person's a conservative, yeah, uh, and, and this person's aggressive, and yeah. Right, exactly, for what? Yeah. You know, you might be aggressive <laughs> for your long-term goals when you retire in 25 years, but what about buying a house in five? Right. So if you put yourself into one category, it's just not gonna work. We have different goals that have different time horizons, as we like to call them. All right, myth number two, the experts must know. We get bombarded with, when we watch CNBC and all the business networks, that they, you know, we're gonna take their advice. Right, now keep in mind, if they're on one of those major channels, mm -hmm. they've earned the right to be there. Those people are usually very successful, very knowledgeable, work very hard to be there. Right. But don't forget that when they're on television, their goals are very different than when they're in their investment goal meetings with their team. Their job when they're right. on television is to entertain you, True. to bring in ratings, to get viewers, True. Yeah. Their job is not to worry about rate of return when they're on those TV shows. So okay, keep, just be careful. Be very careful. Now they're worth your time to watch. I watch them all the time. But just be a good student. Be a good of, student, yeah. right? Okay. Very you, good. You, you learn a lot by because they have their finger on the pulse of the economy, on the pulse of the market. They don't know what's going to happen in the market, but you can learn a lot by listening to them. But just keep in mind what their job is when they're on television. Okay. All right, myth number three is constant monitoring is key. You need to be constantly on your computer, <laughs> constantly. And I have friends whose husbands do that. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I don't know if this is a myth or a, an issue with, with investors, but you're going to drive yourself. The stress you give yourself on a daily basis, you could watch the market for a month and be stressed out as it goes up and down, up and down, and then end up in the same place in a month. So what was... What, <laughs> well, was what did the, you accomplish? What did you accomplish with that? Now, I'm not saying don't pay attention to what you're doing. But if you're working with a professional, it's their job. That's I watch right. the market on a daily basis. I take that stress on for you so that right. you don't have to. You should be talking to someone you know, quarterly, maybe monthly if you're really nervous and close to retirement. Right. But tinkering with your investments can really cause a lot of problems. Right. I mean, look at when Trump got elected way back then. I, I, I was in the business then and everyone thought the market was gonna crash. Bef the futures for that night we were right. down 2,000 points, which was huge back then. Mm -hmm. And by the next morning, the market had recovered and went through the roof. So if you responded emotionally and you right. pulled all your money out of the market, you really hurt yourself okay. instead of being disciplined and patient and sticking to okay. whatever plan you had come up with. Very good. We have a couple left, and I like this one. You need to have a large amount of money to mm. be an investor. Yeah, um, <sighs> this is a good one, and it keeps a lot of people from starting investing. Today, we're very lucky to have so many different types of investment vehicles, and a lot of them you don't need much at all. Now they can let you can buy slivers of stocks and some different things. So if you're a young person and, and you have any income that you could you know, invest outside of your 401k, right. um, which might be a good idea, but that's a, that's a whole different conversation we'll have someday, you can do it. Mutual funds can be a, a very good way to get into the market. And the more money you have, maybe you change your investment style. There are different things you might want to look at investing, but you don't need to have a ton of money to get started. Just find a vehicle that works for you and works for your budget. And get started. Get started. That's, <laughs> get started and make right. it a habit. Right. Make it, people are great at making it a habit of going and get a Starbucks coffee every day before work. Well, why can't we make it a habit? You know, that adds up. You know, five bucks a day for a coffee, five days a week. That's right. 25 bucks a week, that's 100 bucks a month. Make it a habit of investing that somewhere. All right. And finally... Uh, Luke, expensive professionals guarantee that you're going to be successful. <laughs> well, we, we did have 20 seconds left. <laughs> we can't guarantee anything in this, but let's just say fees are, fees are only a problem if we're not getting delivered something. Some professionals charge a lot and they are 100% worth it. But are they 
do you need them? Do you need them for your goals? A lot of, and what are you paying them for? A financial right. planner or an and investment you need to manager? Ask, what am I paying right. you for? If you have a lot of money and you go to someone who charges a lot of fee, but they also have an estate planning department, they have other things that could really help you, it's worth the fee you're paying. So okay. high fees are not bad, just not always necessary. Okay, very good. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up. It flies by, <laughs> doesn't I it? I know, Luke Ronsky <laughs> with the uh, Barnum Financial Group.